Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Please hit like and subscribe. I was hoping I could share my new theory. I just want to reiterate that this is simply speculation. Since I had taken a break from the case and covered other cases and then went back and edited my documentary, I hope to gain new insight and look at the case from different angles. And in doing so, some things stuck out to me. I've decided to take a different look at the statements and the actions of the surviving roommate DM. I think it's important to acknowledge that I'm fully aware of what frozen shock phase looks like and how it really does happen in certain situations. And since I have the acknowledgement of that, I think it's fair to accept that that could be what happened here. However, I think it's also fair to kind of look at the case in a different angle and perhaps there's more to what DM saw and heard that night. Remember, the camera at the neighbor's house picked up noises and obviously DM would have had to have heard those noises and some of those include a thud, crying, a male's voice saying, it's okay, I'm here to help. This is speculation, but isn't it possible that DM wasn't as close to the victims as we have been told? Ethan was just was stayed the night at his girlfriend's house, who was one of five girls who lived in the home. After the PCA came out and we found out everything that DM had heard and saw, the delay in calling 911 was blowing our minds. Not only did she wait so long to get help from 911, but she summoned friends over first. All her actions just did not make sense to us. Could it be she really was frozen in fear and that explains the hesitation? Absolutely. Could it also be something more, perhaps? I spoke with County Prosecutor Bill Thompson. It's an essential part of the case. Uh, whoever discovered the scene first, whoever initiated the contact with law enforcement is all part of understanding what occurred and the timeline of what occurred. Bill Thompson here says the 911 call is an essential part of the case. He says whoever discovered the scene first and whoever initiated contact with law enforcement first helps us understand what happened. I'm not saying that DM participated in the crime itself, but since he says that whoever initiated contact with law enforcement enforcement is a part of understanding what occurred. Is it possible that DM had more knowledge of what was going on, but maybe was in sort of a denial phase or just scared that it was actually happening? Did she say something to Brian that he took it as she wanted him to do this for her? I know that sounds crazy, but let me explain. Is it possible when they tell us that the 911 call came in from a surviving roommate's phone and numerous people were on that call, is it possible that Dylan used her phone but she didn't want to be recorded on the 911 side because she had more knowledge or about what was taking place, she has more information, she knew maybe why this happened? He told me the two roommates may have critical information. The investigators are already talking to him and trying to um, get from them everything they can possibly remember about what they may have seen, what they may have heard, uh, what their activities were, what they know about the activities of their housemates. Remember, in some of the latest defense motions, it states that Brian Koberger has no connection to any of the victims. Does that mean that his connection to the house was actually DM? Is it crazy to think that maybe DM led Brian on in some sort of way? Did one of the victims tell DM something that Brian didn't want her to know, so he was taking his revenge out? Were one of them mean to DM and Brian thought that he was helping DM? by removing the issue and the rest of them were just collateral. Remember, something they kept telling everybody, including the community, is it was a targeted attack, pretty much told the public not to worry because it was targeted. And since we know that DM spoke with law enforcement immediately, is it possible that that's the information they gathered from her to know that it was targeted and that it wasn't going to happen anywhere else? because of the inside information that DM had on what took place. Bill Thompson says that the roommate's information is crucial to the case. Did DM strike some sort of deal where she's safe from whatever involvement she had in the case because she's gonna work as a witness for the prosecution? You've said that this was a targeted attack. 
why not tell the public who was targeted? If it was multiple people, it would go to a long ways to telling the public what you're looking for and who you're looking for, the type of person you're looking for. Why not do that to alleviate some of the fears out there in the community? We don't want to put our investigation in jeopardy by releasing what we have. We told the public very clearly from the beginning that we believe it was a targeted attack. I mean, to be honest, you're going to have to trust us on that at this point because we're not going to release why we think that. Some of the first statements made by the mayor in the coroner have always stuck with me. We heard the mayor come out saying that it was a crime of passion, and then he tried to walk that statement back. Now, this quote that's going around, a crime of passion that has been seen in several media outlets published, he clarified that to us. The mayor is not saying it is a crime of passion. He says it could be a crime of passion. But isn't it possible that that statement was actually true? And couldn't it still be a crime of passion if it was a crime committed by Brian for DM? For whatever reason, couldn't that still be considered a crime of passion? We also heard the coroner state that it was personal and that he must have been pretty angry. The coroner called the attack personal. Couldn't that still be true if his connection to the house was DM and he had some sort of issue with one of the victims? And again, that would make the other victims possibly collateral damage. If this was all true, and again, I'm not stating this as fact, it would mean that they knew Brian was their suspect very early on, from the day that DM handed over everything that she knew about everything. People have speculated that they did know about Brian very early on and have tried to pinpoint the time that they started narrowing in on Brian. Some of these first statements by Kaylee's family stand out to me because on the 20th of November, it sounds like they knew it was a male, even even though Steve tries to say he's just guessing at that fact. And it does sound like they already were in the process of getting the DNA tested through 23andMe or something similar to that, which obviously would mean that they were surveying Brian for a lot longer than we had thought. Could they have been surveying Koberger while they waited for the DNA stuff to come back so that they had something more solid? I think that is possible. They have not confirmed that they have DNA from this person. They just said that they have a ton of evidence. It's all digital, digital mm. information. When they say digital information, could it mean that they were looking through DM's phone with her communications with Brian, in addition to everything else that they've been looking at? Um, they're telling us that there's so much evidence that it's going to take a lot of time to process it all. Um, this wasn't like a pinpoint crime. This person was sloppy. He did whatever. When I say he, obviously, I, you can't say that. That's just me. But he, he made a mess and there's a mess there and they're going to have to go through that point by point And that's going to take a lot of time. That's why they reached out to other facilities to help them with that lab work. Um, hopefully they're reaching out to um, uh, other uh, DNA processing type uh, companies such as like 23andMe. I also think it's possible that he returned the next morning because he felt safe knowing that DM wasn't going to call the cops yet. Knowing his conversations with DM, he felt safe returning in the morning and safe not shutting his phone off again. I really appreciate you guys being here today and listening to my theory. Again, it's just a theory. It's just speculation. And until we get to the trial and find out the truth, that's really all we have to go off of. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the new theory.